I'm gonna I'm gonna get off, and uh, it is uh, Patrick's time to to be with you. Let me see here. Boom. Uh, and I'm going to just start uh, throwing out, bringing on some names. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's see. Oh, we we have Jessica Morgan. Je Jessica Kishner Morgan. Hi, Jessica. Yeah, hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing uh, very well, thank you. Oh, well, I'm glad we're able to talk. I like your, uh, I like that you have your background there. Um, you have that all set up. That's really nice. Uh, does that like light up or anything like that for when you, when you need it to? Um, it actually doesn't. <laughs> it, um, it just, it, it just helps with the background and helping with not seeing anything behind it, so. Nice, nice. Uh, I'd love to hear from you about, you know, that's, that's important that you think about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you, have you always been like somebody that was like very focused? Like, are you an artist in that way? Do you think about the layout of your place and like where you want, where you want your furniture to sit or how all that looks? Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I wanted to be able to focus on, on the when, where, what, and who. Uh, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, that's being uh, laid out there. And uh, so then uh, that way, uh, yeah, when I uh, am in front of a uh, background or in front of a uh, uh, green screen, and then that it, it would help me uh, focus, focus on what's happening in the moment and then not having to be so was just out about so what is it really yeah the yeah that's the initial thing that you don't want there yeah you want to be able to focus on what you need to do not be worried about what's going on behind you yeah yeah um do you have like a favorite when you're doing a green screen do you have a favorite green screen or or thing that you put behind you when you when you decide having fun um and yeah, the thing that I love to see is just in the, and that is a very good question. Um, and yeah, I would say that my favorite thing for, for me is that there is, I wouldn't say pick it out, a, a, what my favorite green screen is, I would just, to pick the person that I want to just to focus on. And that helps me yeah, through out the whole thing because it, then I would know that I have that one person there that I can focus on and that they can help me through everything. And that's my mom. And she helps me. Yeah, she helps me. yes she, she helps me with so much and um i mean she's when i look at her and i focus on, on her it just helps me yeah to know that yeah you, you know what you know what say jessica you got this and and uh, i just should do it yeah that's an important thing to have in your life i'm so glad you have someone that does that and that it's your mom yeah that's beautiful. Oh. Well, thank you, Jessica. And thank you, David. I love it. I love it. Next, we have um, uh, the star of the movie Any Day Now, uh, starring with Alan Cummings and also Wakefield with uh, uh, Brian Cranston. We have Mr. Isaac Leva. Hi, Isaac. How are you? Hi. Good to you. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm honored to get to speak with someone that's gotten to work with some actors that I really love. That's really cool. I'm glad that you got to do that. Thanks. Um, I'd love to hear like what it was like um, to. How did you get started in in doing uh, professional acting? I I you know did a lot of stuff in school, but I, like you got to work on actual films. Mm hmm. How did that, uh, did you always want to do that? Yeah. That's really fun. Um, 
did you get to like go and like could you did you get to like play a character or like did you get to put on some fun clothes when you did that yeah that's really cool uh did was and so did you do you want to keep doing that is that something that you hope to keep doing uh a lot more yeah that's fantastic uh did you have one of the two actors that you liked? What did you have a, one of the movie? What did you like one of them better than the other one? I like both. That's good. That's good. I hope you continue to say that as you do a lot more movies that you get to like all of them equally. I hope they're all great experiences. Well, thank you, Isaac. Welcome. I love seeing you. You too. Um, well, we have a, a visitor uh, from outside of Performing Arts Studio West today. She, uh, she has also done a, a, a wonderful uh, group of performances on TV. Um, uh, we had, she was in Netflix Away with Hilary Swank and Josh Charles and also Amazon's Love You More with Bridget Everett and Lonnie Anderson, Felicia Patty. Hi, Felicia. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad we're able to speak today. Yeah, me too. Uh, I love that you worked on Away. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? Yes. The show is about space. And my mom, who played Melissa Ramirez, her name is Monique. But she stayed back on Earth because she has to um, raise me. And my character had Down syndrome. Did you, do you find like it's easy for you to learn lines and, and do them on set? Or do you feel like you had to like, really like keep looking at your script all day? No, I could um, memorize lines. That's great. I would get ner I would get nervous and I would forget. So that's great that you, that you didn't. Um, that's really fun. What was your favorite part about getting to work on that show or that movie? My favorite part of the show was the, the horseback riding. And um, my other favorite part was um, working with, um, with uh, uh, Talitha, um, who played Lex, and Matt Logan, who played uh, Josh Charles. Nice, nice. Had you, did you ride horses before the movie or, is that, or before the show, or is that something you learned for that? No, actually, I did horseback riding lessons here in Boston. Nice, nice. Uh, I, and had you, did you do that just for the, or had you done that for years before? No, um, this was my first time to be on a horse. Oh, did you like it? Is it something you want to keep doing? Yes, I love horseback riding. It's so fun. Oh, that is so fun. That is so fun. Um, and are you born and raised in Boston? Uh, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, do you, what's your, like your favorite place to go eat in Boston? Um, my favorite restaurant is um, Wall Burgers. Okay, yeah. It's nice, and to support uh, the Wahlberg family, that, that's yeah. nice. Do you watch that show at all, the Wahlburgers? No, actually I watch uh, Ted. Oh yeah, Ted's really fun too. I love I love Mark Wahlberg. He's like incredible actor. Oh yes, he's very very good. That's great. Yeah. And tell me about the other show that you uh, worked on. I was working on Love You More, and I was filming that on in Canada in Toronto, and that's uh, with Bridget Everett and. Michael Patrick King and Bob Kacko was the film director. Did you like filming in Canada? Yeah, it was fun. How long were you over there? Probably like, I don't remember, but. But more than a few days. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's exciting. Um, had you been to Canada before? No. Oh yeah, well, it's great. I got to go a few years ago. Um, there's a TV show called Shit's Creek. Ah. Um, and uh, I got to go visit the set of that and spend a few days in Canada. Uh, I really liked it. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about um, acting? Why is it something that you wanted to do? I love acting because my older brother, Johnny, is um, a film director. And when I saw him on TV, I was like, 
I could be on TV. And look at you now. Did you all used to, uh, would you make any uh, films or perform at home uh, when you were younger? I was, I did high school plays before in high school. Oh, nice. Uh, and how about with your brother? Did you ever work on anything together? Uh, yes, we have. Oh, that's fantastic. That's yeah. really fun. Um, is there like a dream play or movie that you wish you could be in? I want to be on General Hospital. It's um, a soap opera. Yeah, I know General Hospital. Would you yeah. want to be a doctor or a, like, what would you want to do on General Hospital? Would I you want to be a good guy or a bad guy? I, I want to be in someone's daughter or I could probably kiss someone. Ah, okay. Well, they do that a lot on soap operas. So the chances are good that you would uh, have an opportunity. Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, actor on General? Do you, do you watch General Hospital all the time? Yeah. Do you have a favorite actor or actress on there? Yeah. My favorite actor is Steve Burton. He plays Jason Morgan. And my, my favorite um, actress is Laura. She plays Carly. Oh, okay. That's great. They, they, uh, it's good that you uh, can memorize lines because they do a lot of lines every day on, on the sets. So that's, that's, a, that's a big job. Yeah, and my other favorite actor was um, Maurice Bernard. He plays Sonny. Oh, okay. But I have a puppy named Sonny. Oh, I love that. Yeah, he's a micro bully. How old is, how old's your puppy? He's going to be three. Oh, wow. Still very energetic. Yeah. <laughs> I have a six-year-old uh, dog and she still acts like a puppy too. Oh, really? Yeah. Her name's Jolene. Uh -huh. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> yes, yeah, like the Dolly Parton song. Are you familiar with Dolly Parton? Don't know who oh. that is. She's a singer. Uh, we'll have to, uh, I'll make sure David uh, sends you some of her music to check out because uh, she's fantastic. Ah, uh, well, thank you so much. I love just sitting back and listening to all of you. Thank you, Felicia. Yeah. Uh, let's see who next we have all, all these wonderful. Uh, let's, let's do Bernard B.J. Smith. I mean, an amazing actor, dancer, and uh, martial artist. Um, oh. He is. He is. Hi there, Bernard. How's it going? Hello, Petra. I'm good. You? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, when he said actor, I was like, oh, great. And then he just kept listing things, dancer, martial artist. That's fantastic. How uh, did you start doing one of those before the other? Or have you always done all of that? Uh, I actually done my first one. Uh, my first um, uh, martial art was um, before I started acting. I, f I first I did uh, Capoeira from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then I done that for about three years, and I was, and then after that I started to practice boxing and Muay Thai, and that was um it, it just uh, learning more um more uh, new martial arts skills I'd never done before, and then, but then since the pandemic um, closed one of those uh, shop uh, the those my schools down my class down and and they moved far. Uh, uh, me and my grandfather, we found uh, a new class. Um, Kenji is from Hawaii, and I just started a few days. And so I'm just um, getting a hang out of, out of it and trying to just get back to how I used to doing before. What made you want to start uh, learning martial arts? When I was a kid, um, I always watched a lot of fighting movies and even watching my favorite actors, um, mostly Jackie Chan and uh, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee and Michael B. Jordan and, and, and Michael White too. Um, Cause I love to see um, other fighters and just more action. And because everybody always say like, that's fake. And, and I always say like, okay, that's how you think of it, but I like to see it personal face to face to actually know the real effect and 
to be honest, the stuff that I that seen in TV and also in real life, they're real and to me, and mm -hmm. and they're just um, missing out the good opportunity because it's also good for uh, uh, def defending yourself too. Like even though like you you're good, uh, you see uh, all these action stuff like with people do flexibility and all that stuff. Even working out too, like staying healthy and all, because I like to work out a lot. Even um, through this pandemic, like I still I still work at the house and at the at the gym too, just to stay fit and and keep my body moved. Because uh, I just you don't want to take things for granted, like for when things are gone suddenly, if you don't know when they're gonna close down or not, because you never know. So. And like, like for martial arts, it's good for learning where it comes from, from the original start, and also good for uh, defending yourself and those around you because it's good to learn um, different cultures and religious because you get to know things and be a part of it too. Because there are things that I never know about like Brazil, like I didn't know it was part of slavery. When, uh, like, when the when the white masters thought that the black um, slaves were just use it for dancing, but it's like half dance and half martial arts too, and even for like Muay Thai and even boxing and Kenji's, like it's part of your. It's it's not it's it's a good uh, technique but also a good uh, lesson of learning of where it comes from, from, yeah. from ancient history, because you never know what else that was that we don't know in life. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like that learning all of that and martial arts helped you when you started doing uh, dance? Yes, it really did help me because it helps um, my flexibility and also like for capoeira it's a lot of flexibility like uh, you do a lot of stretchings and all that stuff but it's really uh helpful um in like you do flips back flips and twirls around and and handstanding too uh, i love doing <laughs> handstanding a lot and back in my class but it's really good dance just to it's like dancing freely like you're dancing with the spirits and all and and not worrying about a thing just be yourself and just go with the flow and enjoy your enjoy what you're doing enjoy the life uh and then tell me about uh getting into acting uh what well, my acting is i like to the first thing why I wanted to do acting was because of my uncle because he does the, uh, the program before but uh, he, I never see him on TV, but I just follow his footsteps because his um, career and um, admire, admire me to to move to keep, to follow his footsteps what he did, and it helped me to get through uh, auditions, even um, uh, being on few on um, videos, on uh, uh, commercial shows, and also um to meet act a uh, few actors because last um a few years years ago i met uh, peter lee thomas i had an audition um i had a uh, uh, meet the biz with him me and david did on um, at the program back a while ago it was amazing to meet other actors and like um uh, to it's, it's it's good to um to go out and meet your favorite actors and also learn of uh, study to know what parts you might get for the audition because when you watch the show more to know what it's about and you get attached to it then you'll know when to get ready for it like atypical because I, I had an audition for that one but before I did um, I watched the whole clip of it from, se from season one of it and it was amazing and and also from Good Doctor too. I like, I love that show from one of my friends that was there. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really enjoy Atypical as well. I think it's a great show. Yes. Um, for dance, do you, have a, do you have a favorite type of dance to do? Uh, I like hip hop, 
ballet and also jazz and sha 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 <laughs> and like pretty uh, pretty much any dance that I never try out, that I would love to try out and give it a shot too. That's fantastic. Well, it seems like you're willing to try new things, which is really important. Yes. Oh. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, the acting and stuff, is there are there actors that you'd love to work with that you haven't gotten to yet, other than Good Doctor? Um, the most actor I would like to work is with um, Jackie Chan and also um, uh, Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> They're both very nice people too. So that'd be yeah. a good experience. Yes, it will be. <laughs> That'll be a dream come true. I, uh, I actually got to meet um, Dwayne Johnson uh, two weeks ago. Um, I got to do the, um, the premiere of The Jungle Cruise, the new movie he's oh, in yeah, with Emily Blunt. Yeah, um, and uh, I got to interview both of them there and they are, they are both just the nicest people. So, uh, that would be a great experience. I hope that happens for you one day. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, next, we have, oh, and before I say this, I love your wall. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. If any of you uh, have ever watched the TV show Mad Men, this is from the poster of that TV show. Yes, I love it, I love it. Oh. So next we have the founder, the creator of this family that we call uh, Performing Arts Studio West, um, Mr. John Pieces. Hi, John, how's it going? Hi, Patrick. How are you, man? Thank you for I'm being good. so generous with your time and being here. I've, um, we, we, it's a great honor to be working with you. Yes, I love the madman uh, wall behind you and you've, uh, You've done some very, very amazing things in your young life, my friend. So good. Oh, time. thank you. I, uh, I, I'm honored to have been asked to be a part of this. It's something that I've been trying to do for a while, and timing oh, just never seemed to work out. So I'm glad it worked out here. Um, yeah, I actually, now that I had the chance to speak with you, would love to hear um, how this started. How how you decided that this was something that you wanted to do because you're doing fantastic stuff in your young life as well. Well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, let me see. You know, I was I was a you know an actor, a singer, and a dancer as a young person, a musician. Also, uh, did uh, a lot of theater, a little bit of film, a lot of live performing. Um, was in rock and roll bands, and uh, when I moved to LA in 1980, my job, my day job, was uh, working with adults with uh, developmental and intellectual disabilities, and I uh, worked for an agency. And that's when I was pursuing you know my my other my other career goals. And uh, that agency closed in, in uh, 1997. And so at 40 something years old, I found myself unemployed and I'm going, geez, what the heck am I gonna do now? So I took my you know, performance and my arts experience and, and I always thought it would be a, a terrific way of learning for individuals with disabilities to you know, learn through the performing arts. And, uh, you know, when I started out, I was just really thinking, well, maybe we can get a little background for these guys, you know, once, once in a while. And uh, so we, we did on camera training, we did music training, we did uh, dance training. And I, I started off as the, the only instructor um, and kind of did it all until our numbers started growing and growing and growing. And here, you know, 22 years later, our guys have been cast in over 2,500 roles in film and television and commercials. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a, it's been a, for me, a dream come true, I think, because it gives me not only the opportunity to um, continue creating, because we do a lot of original content as well, a lot of, you know, live theater shows when the world was a little bit more safe, and, uh, you know, going on set and coaching. So being able to continue to do that, plus, you know, uh, providing opportunities for all these talented individuals um, to pursue, you know, some of their dreams plus providing, you know, work for working actors. Yeah, and those are all our, all our instructors are all, you know, as David, as everyone else are, you know, professionals in the business and have been a long time. So it's just really being able to create this family 
of artists and to be able to, you know, continue to create wonderful things. So that's kind of a long answer to a short question. But. No, I, like, I, like I was telling David earlier, I asked these oh, open-ended things to like learn and hear. Um, do you feel like there's been a, sh at least you're obviously much more intimately involved, but do you feel like that there's been a shift in recent years in terms of wanting authentic portrayals of on, on screen? Absolutely. And, you know, I just, I, I was just interviewed or I just wrote an article for a university of, uh, of uh, Michigan uh, uh, newspaper that they have. And I was asked the same question and, and it really, really has changed. And one of the things I cited in the article was it used to drive me crazy to go to, you know, SAG performers with disability committee meetings and blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, everybody's preaching to the choir. Everybody's saying, you know, we, we need to be more recognized. We need more opportunities. And I, I got so frustrated in the early years because I'm just saying, the message isn't getting through. The message isn't getting through. But there have been some, you know, wonderful breakthroughs, you know, on Broadway, in film, in television, in um, just in every aspect of, of the industry. And my God, you turn on the commer on you know television nowadays, and commercials are are just a wonderful wonderful venue for for people with disabilities to 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 pop in there and and it's it's really focusing now on individuals with disabilities not as you know some special thing it's just people that are part of our society which is exactly how it should be in my mind that is no, I think, I think, you know, representation of all kinds, it's become so uh, something that people strive to do. And, and I think it used to be something that people went out of their way to say like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, this one time. And exactly. now it's just, it's becoming part of like the way that people are thinking. And that's a beautiful thing to see. Um, you know, I have to say, Patrick, I, I, I never thought it would reach this point. I got to be very honest with you. I mean, it was such a hard sell at the beginning. Um, when, when, you know, submitting, submitting actors with disabilities for roles of disabilities and you'd, you'd hear casting directors that, no, well, we're kind of, you know, we're going another way on that. We want to make sure that the, that the performances are strong and you can't get a stronger or a more authentic performance with someone with a disability who has been trained as an actor instead of an actor trying to portray someone with a disability. You know? Yeah. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has made everyone have to shift the way that they work. Um, and a lot of that has been difficult because, as you mentioned, you can't be doing these in-person performances. And uh, there's there's a beautiful thing that happens when creative people get together in a room. Uh, apologies, that's that dog, Jolene. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but have you found that there has been some silver lining to doing everything remote? Has it provided access um, in ways that maybe that you, uh, that people hadn't had as much before or opportunities uh, that it created that you didn't envision once? Were things that seemed like hurdles end up be opportunities at all? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we were really starting to think, you know, what's going to happen audition wise. And well, first of all, you know, in, in being able to continue to create content, um, it's, it's, it was a challenge. And yet a challenge that's been met. We had our, you know, we had our 22nd, 21st annual holiday show that was all virtual and it was wonderful. We've done spoken word programs. We've done music programs, you know, all with people in little boxes. And I think one of the things that is, has changed in the industry because of this, that is going to stick is the audition process. You know, instead of schlepping down to a, you know, to a casting director's office and getting put on tape and, you know, meeting with people and da-da-da-da-da, you know, it's, it's now commonplace and necessary to, you know, submit those auditions via EcoCast or whatever uh, other, you know, uh, methods that, that uh, casting directors are using. And it kind of puts things on a, kind of evens the plane a little bit, you know? In, in my mind, it does. And when we can pre-record several different, you know, say, say, you know, somebody wonderful like Devon Morgan up here, raise your hand, Devon. Yeah, there he is, has had a bunch of auditions. And if we can, you know, shoot this thing five or six times and we have the ability to check one out and bam and get out the best one, that's really being able to put 
uh, an individual's you know, best foot forward in every single situation. So that I think is a blessing. And uh, you know, we're, just, we're looking forward to um, continuing to be able to submit people like that. We're continuing to look forward to see what the changes are um, you know, with regard to uh, the industry. And, um, you know, we're just very excited, very excited, very excited, you know. What do you, where do you feel like there's the most room to grow still in terms of where things need to, need to be? Ooh, wow, that's a really good question. Um, possibly really strong storylines um, and giving, wow, and this is tough because, you know, the business is the business. You know, if you're going to launch a project and you you write in a character, especially the lead character that that has a disability, you're oftentimes going to need a name to be able to pull people in. I'm thinking of the good doctor off the top of my head. Um, and you know, Freddie is is pretty amazing in that role. I have to say, you know, we had a young man who who auditioned for that role. Um, that. In, in my opinion, David, if, if you want to chime in on this, on, in my opinion, if, uh, if uh, um, good old, uh, gosh, 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 I'm blanking on his name. Okay. Jacob, if good old Jacob had been cast in that role in The Good Doctor, performance wise, he would have been equally as strong. But not a name. You know, this, is, name. This, is, a, this is a young man that, that was in a, in a feature length film. He was, you know, if you haven't seen this, it's a terrific film. Oh, it's and, wonderful. It's called, yeah, it's called um, Nathan's Kingdom. It's kind mm -hmm. of a, a coming of age uh, journey about a, a young man and, and his sister, you know, he's, he's an individual, you know, on the spectrum. His sister's a, a young actress. She's addicted to, you know, uh, prescription medications. They have this this fantasy world that they created that when they were kids, that was kind of their safe place. And, you know, they're now living together as, as young adults and they're having their struggles and they decide to go on this road trip to find this kingdom that they created as, you know, as, as kids together. But, oh my God, you know, just a tremendous, tremendous project, wonderful performance, top notch. And, you know, it, it would just be, the greatest thing to see someone come out of nowhere or, you know, after many years of working in the industry, someone to come out of nowhere to grab a lead in something, you know, a, a television project or a major, major, you know, film. So that's maybe the next, that's maybe the next step, I think. Yeah, as I always say, overnight success after de decades in the industry. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Do you feel like that there's... Like where do, we mentioned atypical, like where do you think they they're getting it right right now? Or where do you think they're getting it the most right? I'll, I'll put it that way. Wow, wow. I I love when when. Hey, yeah, I go on. I'm I'm doing good, Alec. You got to keep on mute there, buddy. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I think it's, it's, and this is more general than a specific answer. I think it's getting it the most right when, and I'm gonna go back to what I said about people being cast in roles where they are just a, a member of society. You know, what if, you know, a, a, a role was cast of a, you know, a, you know, either on a television show or a film or something like that, where you're talking about the guy's best friend or, or the girlfriend, or the the you know the significant other, and it's somebody with a disability where the script doesn't call for a disability. It's just acknowledging that this segment of the population is everywhere, involved in every aspect of life. They have love relationships. They work. They you know they are very very successful. You know a, a lot of the time, and to be able to just open open our minds up to that possibility too. Um, so that, that's my answer to that, Patrick. Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 sometimes that's the only thing. I think, I think you know, it's been great to see uh, uh, everything's gonna be okay. Um, try to like tell storylines um, like, like that. Uh, uh, 
but I think I think that the, the extra step there is is like what you said is in terms of like trusting trusting people to tell their own stories. Um, and I think that that's that's where we that's obviously where we where we need to go. Uh, in terms of like where you'd love, like, like you said, this grew beyond your wildest dreams uh, when you first started out uh, doing this. Where where do you hope that it continues to grow, and how do you hope it continues to change? If we can, if we can continue to just kind of go on this trajectory that we've been on for twenty two years, um, and I think as of look at me with my my look at this got trajectory right <laughs> but i got you i love a good visual aid okay i mean j just i i felt like maybe five six years ago we were kind of riding the crest of something and now we're just in it you know now we're just in it with a lot of different you know really really talented you know funny smart you know gorgeous individuals and being that you know being that there has been and i hate to even use the word acceptance because i don't think you know this population is anything that needs to be accepted a recognition is a better is a better term a recognition of of the talent that is out there as long as that continues to grow and i love it when people create their own content you know whether, you know, there's so many, so many avenues to, to be able to display that now. And for, for the industry to have their feelers out there and saying like, well, this is, uh, oh, that's kind of unique. That's different. I haven't seen that before. And tap into that and give those talented individuals the opportunity to get a foot in a, in a door that might not have been available to them previously. Yeah, I mean, what, what you say about creating your opportunities, I mean, that goes back to what I was discussing with David earlier in terms of journalism. It's like, you know, start your blog, start your this. And I think that social media and YouTube and um, just the fact that we have, you know, entire motion picture uh, cameras on our phone, Great. you know, you can create content from anywhere. And I think that that's fantastic now. It, it really puts, puts the power in, in everyone's hands to be a storyteller. Uh, and I think that that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, you've had so many fantastic people come uh, through this program um, as as guests. Uh, I'd love to hear a few of like the people that got you the most excited um, or either that you were anticipating and excited about or even once they were here, you were like, wow, like that was way even more than I was hoping for. Right. Well, you know, we've had being able to work with uh, Alan Cumming and Garrett Dillahunt was with, with, uh, is he still here? Is I Isaac still here? Yeah. But, and then having, having, having Alan visit the studio and being such a genuine and wonderful person, um, he was amazing to have come through. Uh, John Voigt was an amazing experience, uh, having him come through. Uh, when Sean Penn was was starting to work on I Am Sam back in the day day, you know, he he came to the studio um, just to observe, not to talk, not to, you know, he just wanted to watch. He wanted to find out a little bit more and get inside the heads of some of our actors and being able to just sit with him at, you know, one to one for a half an hour because he got there real early and, you know, we just sat there and had a cup of coffee and I, you know, I was a little intimidated, I have to say. But you know, it was it was a delightful visit. You know, it was it was it was wonderful to to be on set for that film. Having Brian Cranston come to the studio, get out of here. I mean, you know, and this was this was post um, Malcolm in the Middle and uh, um, you know pre pre Breaking Bad, and having him be such a delightful and generous person. And then again, having Isaac Leva being able to work with him on, you know, in, in um, Wakefield was, was crazy. So, you know, from, from having that relationship of just, here's a guy that's gonna, you know, here's a very accomplished guy that's coming down to work at the studio or to, to do a workshop at the studio and, and interview and talk with people. And then being able to work with a film on him with him years later, you know, one of the highlights for certain. And, you know, certainly both with Alan Cumming and Garrett and 
uh, with Brian, being on set with those guys, it was, it was like, it was like a tutorial in film acting to be able to watch the way these guys work and the spontaneity with which they worked. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes I forget that with films. You go to see a film and you, and you, you figure, oh, these guys are killing themselves. You know, they're, they're doing character development. They're working on this, they're working on that. But these, these are actors who know who their character is and they just get on set and bam, they go. They're just embodied by that person. They understand the relationships. They understand where they are. They understand what happened, you know, right before the scene happened. And it, it, it's, it's, it's that magic of, of acting. It's that magic that, that is undeniable when you see it happening in front of your face, you know? Yeah. Well, they say, do the homework and then you throw it away. Exactly. Uh, there's, a, there's a saying that I learned in acting class, but have taken, and I, I, I still have a journal somewhere that it is written like 10 times, just being like, remember this, which is commit to everything, but marry nothing. Um, and it's like, that is such an important thing to keep in mind when you're being creative. It's like, you know, go a hundred percent every single time, but be ready to change at the drop of a hat and be willing to be open to change. And I think that we've all had to learn to do that over the past, <laughs> over the past two years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that, cla it's that classic thing for, you know, for our actors, it's when, you know, it's when the preparation and the study meets the opportunity and there's the, you know, that's when, that's when the success, uh, that's when the success comes. Do you feel like that we're going to have a, there's some stuff that I feel like won't go back to pre pandemic. And I'm hoping that part of that is the audition process and the self taping at home as much as, as much as I know I have friends that are actors that are like, they love that they don't have to drive. They love how easy it is. They love that they're able to watch it, but they're like, but an audition that would have taken me, I guess I would have driven for an hour done the 30 second of an audition and then driven for an hour back home they're like now I just spend the the extra two hours doing it 900 times <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I you know Patrick I think that's going to stay I think that's going to stick around I think it's more convenient for everybody and you know the only thing you miss is that is that little bit of interaction when you're introducing yourself and you get that you know they kind of get a vibe for what kind of a guy you are or what kind of a gal you are and uh but to me, you know, it really does give that opportunity to put your best foot forward. And if they're interested, bam, you're going to have that other opportunity, either via Zoom meeting or, a, or, or a, um, um, you know, working with some of the actors who have already been cast and seeing, you know, seeing who works compatibly. And um, so I think that's going to stick around for a while. I'm hoping because, yeah, I think so it's, too. It's I really do. I think it's I, I think a lot of things have changed and that's one of them for certain. Is there anyone that you have not gotten to have on on here yet that you just like really really want to make happen? You know, I would I would love to have I would love to have Brian come on. I think he would be he would be fantastic, and uh, that's that's probably my number one choice. But David knows that, right? Yes, yes, I do, and I will. Uh, I'll be working on that. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, listen, uh, uh, I, you know, one of the things that I absolutely marvel over is how for a year and a half now, David has gotten somebody on here every single day. And I just asked him the other day, I go, how do you do this? How do these leads happen? You know, I mean, when he, when he was, when he was here in LA, it was him going out all the time and meeting people and doing things the guy was never home. You know, and now he's relocated temporarily up to the Bay Area. And, and but, you know, how do you keep this going? I don't know. Maybe it's easier this way. Maybe it's easier. Well, I do miss the in-person, you know, energy and the touch. But, you know, in the meantime, we've got this uh, wonderful, you know, thing, this tube that we're connecting through. But Although it's the same. It's the same thing with the auditions, because, you know, had David asked uh, if I was able to do this and it needed to be in person, um, that could have been, that would have been a lot harder because you have to factor in the driving and the LA traffic and all of that. So I, I do hope that uh, it has made your job a little bit easier, David, if you're not able to do oh, it in yeah. person. It's just being like, oh great, I can sign on and the minute I'm done, like I'm able to move on to that next thing on my, on my list for the day. It is, and the next thing, you know, on the list is to get this edited through uh, our other amazing instructor, Alexander Tovar. And so we all work together here at Performing Arts Studio West, and I'm so blessed. I mean, Meet the Biz started years ago, and I heard about Performing Arts Studio West for 
gosh, 20 years, I don't know how many. And finally, I came here one day and I was like blown away. And I said, did you, do you, if you ever like need a teacher here? And then three months later, they called me up. John called me and said, um, there's an opening. And I went, oh my God. So, you know, I thought, hey, we brought Meet the Biz is now part of Performing Arts Studio West. And uh, it's just, uh, it's a blessing. And what John has created and, and this is a family. Performing Arts Studio, you know, West is just a, a wonderful family. You know, and I expressed this, uh, you know, spontaneously in a meeting a couple of weeks ago with the staff, but this goes for all of our participants as well. And I want you guys, I want you guys to listen to this. The day that each of you individually walked into the door of the studio are ranked among the best days of my life. And that's how much I love you guys. And that's how much I believe in you guys. So that goes with staff, that goes with our, our, our actors, that goes with everybody. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's been the, 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 the best thing that's ever happened in my life to be able to, you know, put this family together and have it be, you know, the successful and getting you guys where you want to go in your lives. So that's it. Love Peace it. and love, right guys? Uh, thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. John. I have another meeting coming up in oh, yeah, four minutes. Four minutes. So I'm going to bail. Patrick, thank you so much, man. I'm just, you know, looking forward to, to following your career and seeing what's happening next for you. And congratulations on everything that, that, that you have, you know, that you have created. And David, thank you for having me here today. Oh, and uh, sure. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Meet the biz people and PASW people. Thank you so much. I'm going to cut out and let you guys do your thing. Well, John, right before you do, I just want to say that as you were just saying all of that, I was I was clicking through uh, the view to just take a look at all these fabulous faces out here, and they were all beaming and, and sending signs of love and appreciation right back to you as you were saying all of that. So it's, it's wow. a beautiful thing that you've uh, brought this family together. There you go. That's, that's pretty good heart right there, right? Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, George. All right, guys, you take care. Love you all. Miss you. And uh, we will we will see you soon. Okay. I love him. Yeah. Well, fantastic energy. I mean, you know, like you said, you, you get energy from people in person, but sometimes it just comes right across the screen.